Hey, this is a guide on model naming best practices. And I put this quick landing page together uh, for the whole point of this video, to be honest. I wanted to maybe have some more resources on the website at web-crunch.com slash naming-models. Um, there'll be maybe some more pages like this coming up where it's really relative to Ruby on Rails and the conventions we uphold. Um, the documents kind of just assume a lot and the documentation I should say so uh, this is kind of like a, a why and how we do what we do as far as naming models and why they are the convention that within rails is so conventional the idea is it's more than just a convention so it's about providing clarity efficiency and ensuring the app is easier to manage so it kind of goes back into the original like uh, doctrine where it should be about developer happiness, but also just about working with the team, making the app easily, you know, to, to basically read without any comments in the app or something like that. Um, that's all very powerful and stuff we take for granted for um, when it comes to Ruby on Rails and developing like a real world application that has a lot of function and hands on it. So just go down the list uh if, again if you want to check this out i'll have a link in the description below um, but it'll also be in a blog post form so look for the blog post that has this video in it and i'll link back to this page we'll start with making it singular and capitalized so when you do generate a model typically it's on the command line and rails makes it way easy to do and it automates a lot of that you can still go create it by hand but generating it actually creates a migration in the database which is what you really want to do um, so you're able to add uh, columns to a database and use that domain specific language in Ruby that writes the actual SQL under the hood. So um, model names should be singular and capitalized. And then Rails uses this convention to look for a corresponding table in the database. So it's not just because, oh, we prefer it that way. It's more of because it's actually designed to extract that logic of the data store the, the database and you know make it consistent no matter what name you choose so in this case i have a good and an avoid uh example so the good would be singular in this case would be product and avoid would be products so you wouldn't want to use plural in a models case now eventually i might do this on controllers in the controller layer singular is frowned upon essentially so it's the inverse so we'll get to that at some point definitely keep it descriptive and clear so names should be obvious and self-explanatory we want to avoid abbreviations unless it's really well known um, so shopping cart is way better than like s cart so something maybe you or your team sp specifically refers to is maybe kind of a gray area but in my past in my i guess history with using the framework be just generalize um, more times than not you're going to end up with better results so good again shopping cart bad would be s cart it's not so conventional for complex apps um, maybe thinking modularly is a good approach so you might do something with namespaces to keep your models contained within some sort of organizational model. So inventory item is a, a kind of a nice approach to that. So that way you can present the module and then the class and then do instances on it. So you'd use those modules to group related models. And it's kind of just a, a way to essentially organize. So it's not make or break, but it certainly helps as your app grows. Be intuitive with associations. So if a user has many articles, that association should definitely reflect that. So in this case, we're pretty familiar with this look and feel of articles and having many of them. So if you if you almost if you read it out loud and it makes sense, that's probably a good sign. So user would have many articles. Acronyms and initialisms. If you're using acronyms, keep them uppercase. So in our in this idea it would be like http since it is kind of a common standard people know of it maybe don't always um, remember what it means we're going to go ahead and use the full caps for it and then go to camel case following that so you want to avoid the the lower case uh, obviously re avoid reserved words so there are certain words in the ruby language you want to avoid as far as get that goes that's kind of obvious but there are some gotchas that might come about that you take for granted again so just keep that in mind um, context specific naming if your app has models that 
only makes sense within a specific context. Name them accordingly. I put an example here. Good for a school management app would be a great report. Um, a good for an e-commerce app, payment gateway. So just it needs to be contextual in that case. Uh, avoid ambiguity. So names should be unambiguous, even if they end up being longer. So maybe you have a subscriber or a um, um, something that's a little too general. So you you want to make it a little longer in the namespace for the sake of clarity and also just to maybe almost assume in the future there might be something else that conflicts. So in this case, the sub subscription payment would be better than payment specifically. I think that that one's kind of on the gray area as well. It's up to you ultimately if your app, you know, won't scale that crazily um, or just, you know, you know for sure that's going to remain constant and you won't have anything that's going to conflict. That might be a, a thing you could keep, but uh, keep it in mind, I would say, to keep it ambiguous or un unambiguous. Composite names, I think I need a better headline for that, but for models representing a combination of entities, use clear composite names. So user subscription history is kind of a good approach, I think, uh, versus user history. There, are, there A user history can involve so much. So it could be um, things they've liked, commented on, re, re like changed activity, stuff like that. Instead, you could actually dial that in Further, we're using a subscription history. So like just their subscription is what this model correlates with. The next one is polymorphic versatility. Uh, in my opinion, not opinion, polymorphic associations, um, you, you need to choose a name that's really clearly indicate what they do and how versatile they are. So in this case, uh, I think I pulled this one from the Rails docs. They use a picture, employee, and a product, and you can have uh, as many pictures as imageable and the imageable, the able is kind of a polymorphic convention. So there's a convention within a convention here where it's kind of a, a naming convention you add to it. So it's something that can be reapplied across multiple classes. So multiple models in this case. So imageable is kind of that approach and it relates to images. So in our case, that would be the versatility of it. So you're kind of able to reuse it and not have to go back and rethink it all later as you add it to more classes in your app. Single table inheritance is the last one I have here. If you use single table inheritance, the model name should clearly indicate its role. So depending on the complexity of your app, you might inherit from other classes. So in our case, I have a car and a motorcycle that inherit from a vehicle class which inherits from application record. So in that case, you can scope those classes still connecting to the Rails app, but they're actually subclasses of the vehicle. So with Ruby, you can kind of go down the pipe with that pretty far if you want to, but I think keeping it simple is usually the approach most take. So most of the time your class is gonna be inheriting from the application record or nothing at all. A lot of a lot of apps I've had or use would have commonly just models that are plain old uh, Ruby classes. So just able to do the Ruby thing on top. And that's pretty useful just for extracting data or logic into the model, keeping it out of the controller. It's kind of more of a convention too. So this is my quick little guide for that. Um, I think I'll start to add more of these to the website as well, just to give you a place to kind of land, maybe a re -jot your memory or, or rejog your memory. I think that's the name of it. And, um, I'll probably do one of these for maybe controllers, maybe something related to partial rendering, stuff like that. All those little gotchas you learn as you go with Rails. Um, there's tons of conventions and tons of tons of logic to remember. So I find while the documentation is super useful, it's not all automatically like quick and easy to find. Or you find a version that's like Ruby or Rails five something Googling, and it's not like the latest like seven or whatever we're into at the time. So um, these are kind of, I would say, evergreen. You don't necessarily need to worry about much of this changing as far as conventions. That'll be like up to me to figure out and update as time goes on. So I'll do that. Again, it's at webcrunch, web-crunch.com and then forward slash naming dash models. And hope you enjoyed this. Check out the page. Let me know what you think. All right. Peace.